and literally just to take us out for the last five minutes, a little new thing I wanted to introduce to the show, um, which is called Have You Got Anything to Get Off Your Chest? Um, so it could be anything football related. If you lot want to say anything uh, or bring up a little topic and just get it off your chest, then uh, I'll cow put his hand up first. So I'll go with you then, bro. What do you, <laughs> you want to say, bro? Get it off your chest. Um, is Sayonchu overrated? So he slapped me quickly. Um, all right. <laughs> no, I just think he's doing one of those kind of, he was playing well. He's hit a bit of bad form. And you've got to just give man a blight because he was performing really well for two seasons. Like one little bit of bad form all of a sudden don't just mean that he's not good. It's not a little well, bit though. His form's been off for a while and he yeah. got cooked. He got cooked by Holland, bro. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm talking about they they flipped the pancake and it caught it in the pan and just put it back on the uh, pan You, you know, the, you the know it's bad when he had to tweet. And apologize to everyone. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's how bad it was. Oh yeah, yeah. He yeah. got cooked, bro. I mean, I, you know what? I, I really like so into so I won't go on this. Lewis, George, I let, do you lot think he's overrated or what do you lot think? Nah, just a bad run of form for him right now. But he's been really solid since coming into the Leicester squad. So I'm not really going to look at the last few games. And I, I just think it's a bad run of form for him. I think see what he's like in ten games. If he's still the same sort of player, then maybe we do need to have a conversation about Soyuncu. But I wouldn't be worried right now unless I was a Leicester fan because this would be affecting them. But not, for us, right, nah, way, I don't not, think I'm not saying right. I think he's rubbish, by the way. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. Overrated just, doesn't mean crap. It just means yeah, like yeah. you could think he's like Cannavaro level when he really ain't like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like I, I think it's just a bad run of form for now. I, I would say a little bit overrated. Mainly because I think his dip in form has coincided with a lot of injuries with the other Leicester centre backs. Very true. And I feel like he hasn't been able to carry it himself. And also, part and part with how overrated Turkey were as a whole in the Euros. Like, I didn't understand that whole them dark horses thing. I, 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 no, I didn't, I didn't understand it. And then you saw how like, blatantly poor they were yeah. throughout the mm. tournament. So I'd say a little bit, but that's, yeah, I mean, it's, I don't think he was necessarily rated like incredibly highly to begin with anyway just very well <laughs> kind of i rated him really highly better than good the one i wanted liverpool to target the most in the summer like, really? I, really, I really rate him yeah so yeah i was gonna say can we rephrase the question would you guys take soyonchu over varan <laughs> at your club i'm gonna go through the panel and i get to you last drift george would you take soyonchu or varan right now over varan all day long KG? All day long. Varan. Carefree? Yeah, I'll be Varan. Callum? Yeah, you, you know who he is. Drift? I'd take Varan at the moment. <laughs> Please don't Finally. Have said on you before. Please. Finally. <laughs> Last Fancy. year. I no. <laughs> no, but here's the thing. I'm not even. The thing is, Sorrentino, I think, is a very good up and coming defender, but I think he's got still a lot of work to do. And you see this that drop off in form for me, it was always going to happen because he's not at that level yet. Whereas, like, mm. Varane is 30. And that's how me and Kyle were like, no, bro, like, we should go for Varane. And I remember you were like, no, Sorrentino. And I was like, I get it. Don't get me wrong. Because do you know who else I rate as well? Fofana. He, unfortunately, Fofana. his leg he's got broken. Young. Horrible challenge. Right? And it's like, for me, I hope there's a development because I think Fofana's going to go on to be a world-class centre-back. 100%, no questions asked. Whereas I feel like Soyonchu, I don't know. The two, personally, I, I think Fofana has the highest in Soyonchu, but that's just my opinion. Though. I, I mean, I still feel like it just really went under the radar the way Varane got bodied and De Gea had to go back to old school De Gea to pull off that double save. But we'll see how Varane gets on. If Varane's debut, you mean? I don't care what it was, bro. We got bodied and that's what's going to happen in the Premier League to him every week. So we'll see. Uh, we'll I don't see. think so. I'm we'll serious. See. But I guess we'll see what happens if he can adapt. We'll, we'll see. Uh, George, would you want to get off your chest, bro? Oh, yeah. The whole, um news of World Cup being every two years. How does everyone feel about that? <laughs> that potentially might be happening. Absolute far. Right, I'm going to say something that. controversial. No, don't. Would you, you hear me out? Now, hear me out. Hear me out. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Lewis is like, no, bro. No, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say they did the World Cup every two years, but the mm. amount of international fixtures during the season cut by half. Would you then be all right with it? 
Oh, yeah, I'll take that. Ah, so it wasn't yeah, that controversial. Give me international <laughs> games with some meaning behind it. Like, not these dead friendlies that you know England are Yeah, but they, they tried to do that with the Nations League and it was trash. <laughs> I did that, yeah, but I know, but that's why I understand if you, make, if you make more World Cups in place of those sorts of tournaments. But because sure then they carry more in 40s. Like, because then you're missing, then you're not going to have the Euros anymore. Like, when are they going to happen? I guess on the opposite year. So we've got a, yeah, so we've got yeah. a tournament every yeah, single so, year. That's yeah, what I'm going to say. Play, World still World get burnt every out. Every single year. And that's not only ridiculous. that, doesn't that's like the ridiculous. spectacle kind of go away? Because you know, like when you're, obviously four years is, is a long time in football, but we still look forward to those like every four mm. years is like yeah. the World Cup. And it's, it's a massive spectacle. Whereas if it's every two years, it almost becomes... Just becomes like normal now. Yeah. Like that spectacle for me has been taken away, in my, in my opinion, anyway. I don't yeah. think we'll feel the same about it. Yeah, we had this I, whole problem with players killing themselves, and you're going to give them a major tournament every single season. At least okay. with these crappy internationals, you're like playing mm. some kids or something instead of the, instead of the bigger players. But, but I do think they, they, should, they should just reduce the friendly matches because they're pointless. Were they all, every club and every team and every league has a winter break, a proper winter break of two weeks or more? And then obviously a break straight after the season before the World Cup, and then a break after it, as they they still do get a decent amount of time. Again, I'm not saying that I want this to happen because I do think mm. it will kind of take a bit of the gloss off the World Cup. It being every four years, like the Olympics would be if it was every two years. But at this point, I, I'm done with friendlies. Like I'd rather watch the World Cup than these dead friendlies, like Europa or whatever it's called, the Nations League. Just sounds like an old wrestling unit, like back in the day. It just down dead. It's just a dead competition. But wouldn't, I hear wouldn't, that. They, wouldn't they have to cram games during the seasons to allow those breaks though? In between, so you're yeah, still kind of would, killing the players. If there's a tournament the every year. They would. True. And I put again, it to you like this: How can we live in a world where there's a World Cup every two years, a Euros every two years, but I can't watch Liverpool versus Norwich at three o'clock? <laughs> oh, oh God. <laughs> and not only that, Cal, even when you were speaking about the breaks as well, you see how you like broke it, like broke it down. It'll be here, there and everywhere kind of thing. Yeah. Mm. I feel like the players need like a constant breaks. It's got to be like four weeks, five weeks, rather than two weeks here, two weeks out oh, there and then two weeks mm. there again, because they're not getting proper rest. It's like having intermittent sleep, isn't it? Like if you, if you wake up during the night or whatever, oh, broken sleep is the worst. We know. Fact. We know. Exactly. <laughs> we know. Like, well, everyone's probably a test to that. Broken sleep is a mazza. A, a lot of players won't take a break anyway. They'll just train somewhere else. They, it they, it wouldn't even just be training. that, guys. Form is something you can't go in and out of. The reason you're supposed to get a whole rest and then get pre-season and get ready is because you don't you don't dip in and out of form like that. Like you're you're a human. It's not a game where you just switch off and switch it back on. If you're gonna keep losing form every break you get and these random breaks you're getting, it will affect your actual performances as well. So Sorry. man, trying to call me out slyly, bro. <laughs> I'm back my country, bro. <laughs> Love me. Why are you trying to bait me up on the street? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, do you know what that do you know what's a very good point with that as well? Is that would then affect also the AFCON. Imagine if the AFCON is everything and then you've got the Euros and the World Cup, then that happens. Yeah. You've got the Gold yeah. Cup, the Conquer Cup, you've got all of these, like it would just get hectic if they did that. Ma Copper Ma America injured every month at that point. Yeah, fair enough. Surely, Funny surely, this is, surely, just get rid of the friendly matches. Like, have the qualifiers. Money. Draws. Surely, that's enough, man. Like, it's the, the friendlies are pointless. Money but does it though? When we're playing like Andorra at Wembley, when it's like fifteen yeah. pound a ticket, yeah, and, and friendly, it's even, and it's three not even weeks full. into a season, no, like, I, that's look, another thing as well. Guys, I get it, but as you just said, fifteen pounds. But if they if they pack out ninety thousand, bro, that's fifteen times ninety thousand. Yeah, they wouldn't have got if they didn't play the game. But surely, surely, it's better off having a full ninety thousand of full fifty pounds, sixty pound playing someone like the Netherlands in a qualifier. Than playing North Macedonia in a friendly. No, no one's going to North Macedonia in a friendly. No, like, but that, that's they, just not they, happening. They do both, innit? They'll do the cheap Andorra friendly and then they'll do the Netherlands qualifying. Yeah, but there's got to be a point where money isn't the motivation to killing players. Do you know what I mean? Like, Drift, when when the, when they find that out, then football will be a better place. Until that time, bruv, we just got to ride it out. Money is the motivation. Or, or I would at least rather they had a whole, I think this was proposed, potentially proposed as a counter thing. Have a whole month of qualifiers and friendlies rather than doing it three weeks into the season and then we're doing it again mm -hmm. in November. I'd rather we spent the whole of November doing international qualifiers than 
having it in and out during the season. Because then at least you're focused on your club for one month and then you're carrying on with the season sort of thing. I think I'd prefer that, to be honest with you. That's not a bad shout. I mean, I don't know if I could go about Premier League football for a that, whole that's month. The only, that's the only problem. Mm. If it's dead international football, I think I might cry. But yeah, I feel like it pointlessly breaks up the season when the games are no, so does. rubbish. Yeah, it does. No, it does. Especially if it's a friendly, not a qualifier. It does. It does. And they're definitely over cramming it. Um, but before we finish up, anyone else got anything they want to get off their chest? Um, no, go on, Liz. Yeah, go on. Andreas Christensen has 36 clean sheets in 44 <laughs> games. Is he or is he not one of the best defenders in Europe right now? Let's he's discuss. Hoy Bjerg's the best defensive player uh, in the world. If you're saying that, then. No, he's, do you know what? Go on by those stats. Well, Hoy Bjerg's class, to be fair. Can't even slander him too much. <laughs> Go on by those stats. We can, kind of do it. we can double back on what Cal said and we can flip this the other way. Is Christensen underrated? I think so. I think he's hella underrated. Hey, no, he he's... don't get the PR I see the other defenders getting. And he's, he, his 2021 has been absolutely ridiculous. It's clean sheet after clean sheet, consistent performance after consistent performance. He's beefed up. He's got a lot smarter in terms of reading the game as well. He's He's got a lot more confident. He's recovering from big mistakes that he makes. And those mistakes have basically disappeared in itself. So I don't see a weakness in his game, but no one speaks on it. Do you, you know think there's a weakness in this game? See, I do. <clears throat> Slightly. I'm talking about... But again, do you know what I feel like as well, though? I feel like the way how you guys play, and because you play a back three, I feel like the protection is there. Whereas if he was in a back two and he gets isolated, I think it's a different story. That's just in my opinion, though, because, again, the way how Chelsea play with a, with a back three and you've got Kante sweeping up, I think it kind of... It, it makes your defenders look a little bit better than what they actually are. But saying that, though, I'm actually, what's say a fan, but I actually rate Rudiger. But I remember Jeff used to say to me all the time, like, no, nah, but Crazy, in the back though. two, yeah, but in the back two, like, how would he look? And I was like, that's a fair point. But I feel like in a back three, the way how you lot are set up right now, all your defenders look very, very, very good. But I just mm. want to see them in a back two to see whether mm. they can kind Zuma of still hold their own. Before. Zuma looked horrendous in the back three. I can't lie. That's true. Always that is true. Him. I, 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 I get what you're I, saying I, about the back two argument, but what wait, did Denmark, did Denmark play that? back two or three? Did who? Back, back two. Back two, isn't it? So he played does it for see? Denmark. Lampard, what? yeah, Lampard's done it. He's played under it for Denmark. He won the Europa League in the back two as well. What people um, usually say about him playing in the back two is that he's too weak and he can't really um, have a presence on the pitch. But that's like, come leaps and bounds this year he's beefed up he's got a lot more physical he's dominating attackers a lot more just why i'm saying all of his weaknesses that he once had i don't see anymore like genuinely i don't see an error in this guy's game right now he's had he's been amazing for at least the last eight nine months non-stop yeah, yeah I'll, I'll agree with lewis there because before i used to say this about christiansen he used to get away a lot with a lot more than zuma did but it's just because Zuma looks clumsier than Christensen did. Yeah, but Christensen yeah, yeah. has ironed out those deficiencies. I've noticed it in the last, uh, especially since Tuchel's come in, obviously. You know, he, he's just stepped up his game a lot. And the Euros, he showed that he was the main man in defence as well. So, yeah, man, I, I'm a, I agree with Lewis on that one. Fair, oh, play. fair play. Fair play. All right, then, boys, well, we'll wrap that one up. If anyone's got anything else they want to get off their chest, save it for next week. Uh,